I, the idea of starting Call That Singing came to me in a blinding flash. I had so many occasions when I'd been playing with people in bars and all sorts, playing in different keys and different songs. I thought, oh, hell with this for a game of soldiers. So I said, where is it you can get that number of people that are really quite good, that think they can sing, but they don't really know how to? And I thought, if I got them all together, then they would be able to sing, but they wouldn't be heard, because what people do enjoy doing is singing. They don't enjoy being listened to. So we had to get them some way by which they can actually be listened to, with lots of them. We ended up with about 500 people down the hall in Glasgow. We advertised for it by saying you want to get in the television, because everybody thinks they look better than they sound, but you see a lot more hairdressers than you do elocution lessons. So I said to myself, right, this is the one occasion we've got for getting everyone to sing something that they want to sing, but they're not going to be heard. And it started off like that. We ended up singing everything from the Bach to the Beatles, Verdi Opera, Offenbach. We even tried some Wagner, but we couldn't get the helmets on in time, so we had to blow that one. And the whole thing eventually came up to a cracking climax to open for Glasgow's 1990 City of Celebration. One, two, I have been on. What are you, a dog in a car? What I really get out of it is the sound of people making really very good music, and they never thought they could. It's not like a professional rehearsal where people turn up and you're expected to know what to do. When people turn up for our rehearsals, they haven't a clue what to do. In fact, they sometimes leave the rehearsal not knowing what to do, and I do that on purpose as well, because a little knowledge is more than dangerous. They find that they enjoy the singing more and more the more that they do it. And that's what makes sure that they transfer the energy from one person back to another. Eventually the whole hall is glowing with a sound that, frankly, if you're feeling a bit down, by the end of the night you'll be walking out in cloud nine. I like to build the world a home and burn it with love. It gives you a closeness and it makes me feel for the first time in my life I can be a part of a musical world that I've always loved. I knew all the words and knew all the, the, the tunes but never, was never allowed to be because I had no talent in that way. That's what Call That Singing's done for me. At my old, ripe old age of being retired, what a difference it's made to my life.
So we've been there over two years now. I don't think we've missed one of the concerts or one of the of the rehearsals. We find it's uh, build our life around it, so to speak. And uh, for the music is is always very stimulating. It reminds me of the time when I was we were much younger and uh, maybe back in the 40s when we used to have sing songs around the piano. As a painter, I don't suppose coming to Glasgow in the 40s, if I'd been, had I been a, a stranger, I would have been very impressed by Glasgow. But Glasgow has changed over the years. The biggest change in Glasgow within, say, the last 30 years has been the cleaning up the, the old red and grey sandstone buildings. Uh, Glasgow is full of Victorian architecture, probably one of the finest Victorian cities in, in certainly in Europe, I'm sure of that. So when I go out to paint Glasgow now, instead of taking various shades of dark grey, I would find that I, my palette would stretch to much brighter colours, golden yellows, ochres and so on. So that, uh, that the city has been reborn to a great extent. All that singing is, is a sort of tonic, I think, and it's almost a, an antidote to so much of what comes under the, the heading of stress today.
We were at a dinner party and I saw this shot of the pouring rain in George Square. It was absolutely lashing. Uh, everybody was standing around looking rather droopy until this marvellous shot of people singing, happy, little woolly hats pulled down over their faces and it was just marvellous and I thought, right, there for me. So I phoned Sue and joined. So it was the 4th of January I joined and I've never missed a rehearsal since if I've been in the country. It was brilliant. I couldn't believe that I was among people who were so committed to singing, even though every one of us says, oh no, we can't sing. The Burrell Collection was the lifelong work of a man called Sir William Burrell, who gave his collection of nearly 8,000 very mixed artifacts to the citizens of the city of Glasgow. So we have wonderful tapestries and carpets. We have gorgeous paintings. Did you know that the really, truly original Degas, the rehearsal, is in the borough? Uh, it's part of our proud heritage and part of the heritage that Glaswegians uh, are fond of and know about. The whole of the rest of the world does too. I was determined when the girls left home that I wasn't going to be an empty nester. And I thought Monday night could be singing night. Call that singing's about friendship. It's, been, it's about having a very good time. It's about never leaving in the evening without having had a good laugh. It's about singing the songs you always wanted to sing, about the music you always wanted to sing. It's about my favorite song uh, that we've ever sung has been Little Old Wine Drinker Me. Now, a douce Scottish lady, middle-class librarian, never sings Little Old Wine Drinker Me, but I do.
all sorts of people go, from housewives to professionals. Mm. Everybody seems to love it. And people who work in libraries, you, know, uh, you Museums. name it. And ladies who have no husbands uh, are found a, a wee niche for coming out and enjoying and meeting people, you know. They thoroughly enjoy it, obviously, you know. The love of museums is inborn in a Glasgow person. Within the area of the Transport Museum, there's a, all about steam engines, and I was a fireman for a while in the, with the LMS. Uh, terrific time in my life. There's also tram cars, which my father happened to be a driver for 40 odd years. He got his gold medal for being with the Glasgow Corporation at that time. There's also all the, the, the old lorries, as they called them, the horse and carts. And I was fortunate enough, when I left school, uh, the first job I ever had was going around with the horse and cart, helping to deliver in the centre of Glasgow. Eventually, I progressed that I could actually take a horse and cart out myself, you know. And the Transport Museum brings all that back every time I go to see it. I feel that my voice is much better. I don't sing as I should, but I feel as though I'm singing pretty well. Um, it's brought enough a lot of happiness to our house because we had an um, unfortunate incident 15 years ago and we never had music in the house because music would make us cry. And now, Joe, th uh, thanks to Joe, he's managed to get us to sing things like Climb Every Mountain without crying, which is a marvellous thing. <laughs> I think that there is still so much music that they haven't quite covered and there are still so many people that haven't quite joined us yet that we could really go broader and broader, do this in other places and meet more and more people who would like to do the first stage in really enjoying singing, which is quite simply enjoying being yourself. After a while, it's the kind of sound you make in yourself that people listen to, it's as personal as your face, it's got to be treated with respect but there's no reason for it to be serious.
disabled person, I injured myself on the fire service, and uh, I found that um, I was very limited to what I could do. And uh, I, I'd realised at the time that I had to find something, and actually I found that singing is a good therapeutic um, occasion. It can actually um, help you along. And that, again, is one of the other reasons why I joined it. The Antonine Court is, uh, is, is a brand new concept and looking after disabled people. It's a resource center for Indrum Chapel. The whole idea behind this center is the fact that we want people to come in here and feel at ease, especially people who have disabilities, who have a lot of stress, in particular their families. We want them to come in here and enjoy the facilities. One of the main reasons for rehabilitation is actually getting people who are disabled to uh, lead as normal a life as possible, and that is also includes getting back to a working life. Because of the, the size of Glasgow, the, the old type tenement that's fast disappearing, this is part of the thing that's missed in Glasgow, and I think we call that singing, it's bringing people back together again and giving them an identity.